Hi everybody, welcome to our next lecture on friction that's going to cover two things. A very specific friction situation called a skid, and we're going to look at just some basic free body diagrams um, that involve friction. Now, the idea of a skid, well, here's our scenario. Let's say you're driving down the road in your 600 kilogram car at a speed of 30 meters per second, about 65 miles an hour. When out in the road in front of you, 80 meters ahead, walks a cow. Yes, that's my cow. Now, you decide to panic and you slam on the brakes. And you also happen to be driving a 1976 Buick. Now, why 1976 Buick? Well, that was before the invention of anti-lock brakes. So often what happened is when you slammed on the brakes, you locked up the wheels, and now instead of rolling, they were sliding along the road, not really giving you much control. That's the great thing about anti-lock brakes, is when you slam on the brakes, it actually pumps the brakes so the tires keep rolling and you can maintain control. But we're in our old Buick, so we're going to start skidding towards the cow. Now, the cow's 80 meters away, and we're going to wonder is like, is that enough distance to stop in, to skid to a stop? Well, luckily you've purchased some new tires, so, and the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road is about 0.8. Now let's look at the free body diagram of the car itself, because this is where a common mistake will often occur. Now to begin with, we'll start with what has to be there, the weight, mg. It's on a flat road, so there's a normal force pointing straight up. Now, you have your foot on the brakes, not on the accelerator. Therefore, there is no forward force. In a skid problem, people are often tempted to put a force going this direction in the forward direction. But that's not true. That does not exist because you are not pushing the car forward. In fact, you're doing just the reverse. So the only other force is friction that is opposing your motion. Now, the tires are locked and you're sliding, which means it must be kinetic friction, not static friction. So these are all of our forces. Now, if we were to sum our forces, well, in the x direction, all we have is friction, but notice it points in the negative x direction. So it's a negative value. And if it's the only force, it has to equal ma. In the y direction, in the vertical, we have normal pointing positive, mg pointing negative. That equals zero because the car is not moving up or down. So if we look at this equation, one of the things we need to find right away is our acceleration. It's always an important value, right? But our equation has acceleration right here. So this says negative fk equals mass times acceleration. Now if we remember from last time, there's a formula for kinetic friction that says friction is the coefficient mu times the normal force. Now, I'm going to do a little algebra here. Notice that I'm saying that wherever fk is, I can write mu k times normal, because they're the same thing. So over here in this equation, where I have this negative fk, I'm going to replace negative fk with negative mu k times the normal force, because they're the same thing. Neat algebra trick, right? Now I have this other equation that says normal minus mg is zero. Well then according to that, if normal minus mg is zero, then the normal force is the same thing as mg. Now that means the same thing. Wherever I see normal force, I'm allowed to replace it with mg, which is right here. So I leave the mu k, and where the normal force is, I can write m times g. Now, there's a couple things you could do. At this moment, you could put in the values, because I know what the mass is, for example. But an interesting thing here is it actually doesn't matter what the mass is. Since mass is on both sides, I can actually cancel it out. Okay, another little trick of algebra, right? And so now it says that mu times gravity 
gives me what my acceleration is. So in this case, my acceleration must be negative. Well, the coefficient of friction is 0.8. Gravity is 10. That gives me an acceleration of negative 8 meters per second squared. Very big acceleration for a car. Okay, It's getting to a stop. Now, that really hasn't told me if I've stopped in time. Well, I know this 80 meters is sort of the range I have. So I'm traveling initially at 30 meters per second. I want to come to a stop, so my final velocity better be zero. And now I know an acceleration. So what I need to know is, well, what is my displacement? Well, time is in here, so let's go to our good old time unknown equation. I want to come to a stop from 30 meters per second at an acceleration of negative 8. 30 squared is 900. Subtract 900 from each side. And divide by 16, or negative 16. And I get 56.25 meters, which means I actually stop in plenty of time. Yay for the cow, right? Not too complicated. However, let's say the next day you're driving down the same road, same speed, same car, same cow, but it happens to rain. Now, guess what rain does? It changes one of the surfaces in contact, the road, the tires. And that might drop your coefficient down to, say, as low as 0.5. Now, just because that's changed, the free body diagram hasn't changed, the equations haven't changed. In fact, nothing's changed except your acceleration. Your new acceleration would be negative 0.5 times gravity, or negative 5. OK, negative 8 down to negative 5 doesn't seem like that big a deal. But now if we actually put that in time unknown, we find that we still were at 30 meters per second squared. We end up with a displacement of 90 meters, or 10 meters through the cow. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why when they, you start to learn to drive, they tell you to always keep a longer distance between you and the car in front of you. It happens to be raining, because that alters the coefficient of friction. So again, a couple of important points about a skidding problem. First of all, there is no forward force when something is skidding, because nothing is pushing it forward. There is always only kinetic friction, not static, because the object is sliding. And you'll end up with a negative acceleration, because when things skid, they are basically slowing down, sliding to a stop. All right, now let's look at some free body diagrams that are a little more involved, that now involve friction. And it's going to look some familiar to ones we've done before, back when we talked about forces. So let's say we've got someone who has decided to tie a couple crates together and pull them along the ground with a certain amount of force. What would the free body diagrams look like? Well, for mass 1, of course we have its weight, its normal force. There's a rope attached to it on the right, so there must be tension pulling the right. And friction must oppose that motion, so it's acting to the left. For the second one, well, we have weight acting down, a normal force on this one acting up. We have the force that someone's pulling with to the right. There is a rope to the left. So there's tension there. But friction must also oppose the motion on this one. So there's that extra force on that left side, friction. Not too bad, right? Next example. We've got two objects tied by a string over a pulley, one hanging down, the other on the table. When we let them go, this is going to fall, dragging this one to the right. But there's friction now on the table. So if we look at the one on the table, has its weight, has a normal force. There's a rope on the right, so there's tension. And it's being pulled to the right, 
so it must have friction acting on it to the left. Now the one that's hanging straight down, it's not in contact with anything, so it has its weight acting down and only tension pulling up. Actually a lot easier probably than the last one. Last example. Something sliding down a ramp. Now, because the object is tilted, when we draw its free body diagram, we have to draw it like it looks, tilted. Weight, due to gravity, only acts straight down. Gravity can only pull things straight down no matter what it looks like. Now, since it's tilted, perpendicular to contact is in this direction, so the normal force actually points this way. And since it's sliding down the ramp, friction, and it would be kinetic friction, must oppose that motion going up the ramp. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's an example of a skidding problem and a couple of different free body diagrams using friction. See you next time.